Are you an entrepreneur? Are you brave enough to face the might of the making moves charges? It's no use standing there and thumb sucking an answer. Mm. Well, five hours a day. Yes. You're lazy. Have you taken samples to them? Uh, no, um, we haven't. I do feel a little bit disrespected, and that's why I'm, I'm a little bit angry. Is there any of you who are the business model leader? Do you want to pitch for 50,000 rand cash injection into your business? The stage is set for you to be part of this amazing opportunity for young entrepreneurs. The technology sounds incredible. You are an incredibly smart guy. My concern is how do you go from where you are to where you need to get to without burning? Uh, we're going to be running a pilot uh, in a small scale municipality where we're going to be going for about 500 to about 800 kiloliters at about 650 per kiloliter. And eventually our dream is to get to big water distribution within the African continent of close to 20, 20 million liters in a day per plant. South Africa is a beginning in Kigayo Kikuza Amanzi Ashanzi Gile, Uguzabantu Baguli Baguazu, Tolamans Wopus Abanta Basala Ima Panjen, Nasema Plazin, Abanya Gibabantu Abanao Gilin, Kinga Lena Gunga Tuli, Amanza Sanzi Gile Wopus, Umanga Begabanabe Katanis on Abantu Abasala Yamalogshin, Nasema Tilopin. Namsanya Suisi Trite Usu with a social entrepreneur and water scientist, Umurundeni Mafum. His business, Kusini Water, manufactures mobile water purification system for disadvantaged communities. My name is Mrendin Mafumo. I am the founder of Kusini Water. At Kusini Water, we make mobile solar-powered water purification systems. Uh, primarily, our water purification systems are meant for areas most affected by water shortage. Uh, what, it, what makes us unique is that one, we mobile containerized systems, and number two, we use locally sourced um, macadamia nuts to manufacture our filters. Um, you can find us currently, um, we've got two sites, one in Whitbank, Emalatheni, second site um, in Venda, in Shandima. And also you can find us through our website, www.kusinewater.co.za. I'm telling you, say we pay them a lot. They need to know how to handle no small business. We have to be very careful. This man studied chemistry. Today, on a business like a loan agent, all smuggling. The business like it is a solar-powered business. Now, we have to know about the AMA system, our water purification. In today's young fund, we have got a good little business like it. The seven zalanjan go back and get money. My customers they work. In case we don't get the money, go back and get a good little loan. Alright, alright, alright. Tingen and Ampes. I know, please, please. Uh, mm -hmm. I've got five tanks that I need to fill today. This Yo. is five liters. Alright. Uh, so, what I'm going to do, I'm going to fill up the tank a little bit. So, I'm uh, just going to switch on the pump. Okay. So, what the pump is doing, we're getting our raw water from there. Yes, sir. And then it's going through the process. Alright. So, basically, what we, what we have here, we, we just have our raw water, yes. uh, which primarily comes from either the ground or any other normal source. And mm -hmm. we take it through our five stage treatment system. Mm -hmm. um, out of the five stages, two of those are, are our IP, yes. and the three others we, we buy offshore. Oh, okay. No, no, no. So, this is actually Sagan. Okay. Okay. So, uh, please explain to me. Yes. 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 Y
Elala. Take me through our pillars of business. Lab. Yeah, so primarily our, our biggest pillars is that we make um, the water filters. Um, mm -hmm. So our IP lies on making water purification systems. And these okay. systems are made from academia nutshells. Mm -hmm. um, and primarily these systems, you bring them into a community and we find raw, um, raw water uh, from any source. In this community that we work in, I'm just going to switch off the pump. Okay. In this community that we're working in at the moment, they haven't had water for five weeks now. Mm -hmm. So we come in, we treat water from any source, take it through our treatment system, and primarily we're supposed to use an off-grid power source. Yes. Um, and all of that water goes through, it's very dirty. Um, I'll show you some of the water from, from the raw water. Mm -hmm. uh, as it goes through our treatment system, as you can see, it comes out um, as clean as that. So the idea is that when you come into this place, ne, mm -hmm. you fill up your own water. People come in and they buy water per liter oh, okay. or you know, a, a rent um, per liter mm -hmm. because we want to be able to make the business sustainable mm -hmm. but also not too expensive like bottled water. Yes. I mean, imagine bottled water is 500 million, yes, pay sir. like eight rands. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to be more sustainable but also more affordable as well. All right. So put on my before we call the business lab. Buse Benza, was totally spilling. Yeah. What made you finally decide to move to Seven Yeah, I think I think for me it was it was a case of when we look at rural areas, areas that I come from primarily mm -hmm. um, as a person that comes from Venda. Mm -hmm. A lot of the skills that I had, a lot of the experiences, I was using it in Joburg. Mm -hmm. So I decided, you know what? Let me start my own thing. Mm -hmm. Take this the learnings that I've got. Mm -hmm back home um, to, 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 to bring safe water in, in my area. Mm -hmm. So we, we launched there in Venda, yes. um, in an area also which has very poor water quality and mm -hmm. also poor access to water. This uh, premises that you see here has been primarily funded by through the fund that I have at the Innovation Hub. But also we've got some partnership that we've established with um, some major brands as well. So, so some of the branding and some of the marketing activities that you do see inside our outlet mm -hmm. are were paid for by, by an organization, um, the company. Okay. okay. All right. There we go. And I'll fill it up. This one is ready. This is now for sale. Yeah. Okay. Aha. This is All the right. other side. Yeah, so welcome to, to the front house. Yes, sir. So this is all of our storage that we have at the moment. So we're just gonna take away this water and make sure that it, the sun doesn't penetrate because um, the sun the sun makes algae to grow. Yo wow. This is So the seeds are then for for display. Okay. It distribution point yako. Laguti abandu banga kwazo tutole amans. Ngabe skuluma ngama container pela or you've got another way where you can distribute your product. Yeah. So 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 at the moment rina rina container mbi zina rabana zo. Mara dwa futi rabana distribution model ine in the corporate sector une ring samadi ane dia office so dispenser. Um, kind of some of the, uh, the event tenders too, so, so. Mm. and then they are putting over the Rwanaka website. Yeah, well, well. The Pilam is in Chile because, um, a Kalin being a Sabin. So, manje seeing a corn like a wooting little Zamis Nane, uh, in Zokesa, Doctor, and Jomom Chi, the cause is as good. Um, so he's a good guy um, always there for you like ngasho ukuthi ngiyena ngithole more experience at yoko we empower the young entrepreneurs, uh, mainly small to medium businesses. Uh, our goal is to empower them to be able to take credit card payments. We also have a point of sale app uh, that helps them track their sales. So Cassini Water is, uh, became a merchant of ours. So they use our card readers and our point of sale to record their sales. Um, and we like to do business with our own merchants. His services are great. Um, he delivers about 50 bottles of water every two weeks. His prices are very competitive. Uh, the quality of the water is very good for the, for the price. People do have an appetite to buy a well-branded product, an aspirational product, when they know it's good quality. I'm battling to see 
how this business is going to grow and how it's going to make money. Mulundeni was born and bred in Venda. He says he was fascinated by all things mechanical from a young age. At his home in Four Ways, we learn about his childhood and some of the challenges he encountered while growing up. I take photographs and I will post them on Instagram. Um, wait, that's not how we met, but anyway. What happened was he followed me on Instagram. I, I followed him first because of another story. <laughs> and then he followed me back and then I stopped posting for a while. And then he sent me a DM and he said to me, um, please post more because I really enjoy your photos. <laughs> yeah, so, so, we, so we, 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 we started exchanging uh, messages uh, and then we decided to meet for a photo shoot. Uh, at the time, what, what was happening was that Nandi could tell me to go to the camera So then I could go to the camera and get a band in there. I go to the camera. So we couldn't, we couldn't go for the photography um, tour. We were supposed to go photographing in, in GP's town. We ended up just having dinner. And that's where it started. I think my daughter and my wife are, and, my, and my mother as well are my, my biggest anchor. Mrendeni and Namiya were they're very close. Bamba every day, you know, we're for Nirana all the time. Little baby, you're young, 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 you're so and then at Abandam Duru or Toma, Abanam Ratuanga for Timaras no Nabang Batur. So Era Wanem de Mavurin Ah, Revanji. Rosibonanga Shinga Chamusi, Gamunyanya, when Azuru, Bamutani, Odaru Rufuno. Utangane za mtu mwona mungwe despite background yawe ndi mtu ene ufuna batu chipinga chote. Yeah, but if you know him personally, he is very dramatic. And I think as a friend, Murendini is very, very supportive. Chinenda funa chone reatike zana kamishumo ya worine, arari achiko the support, hundia the dane para support ana, nane arandiko the support, I know, ndi mtu ene nga mufo unera chipinga chimona chimwe. Um, I was very fortunate that my mother had saved up money for me to go to school. Um, Mara, when you go forward with your postgraduate, you, you now need a lot more money, which um, obviously, because my mother is, is a nurse, she, obviously she couldn't get that big, big bulk of money to, to pay for my postgrad. I then was forced to to take a six months gap. Um, in the six months, I then started um, looking for, for jobs. I then started working at the university itself um, for, for postgrad young. So, I was in the university and I was in the lab demo. Robert was the party guy. And then Robert Richie Bachpinga Chote, Robert Richie Barat at the road trip. Zenda Bona Zone, Chpinga Chote, Robert River to Ene, Rats at Ruba Focus, Dimara, Sinti Uba, Nacha, Ene, Amar, and Dono Bona the changes which Roni Hawe. Nigaru weakness, Amurendi Watanganezesa, Vatu, Chimuchpinga, and Dipa, Ungari, Uba Ozita, as a which Roni. And I think sometimes. Um, it's very easy to take advantage of that is because he's always 
available and willing to help. I grew up in a big family, so a big part of me has been about giving because we share every single thing. So I wouldn't say that's a weakness, but I suppose sometimes you would say, you know, people can take advantage of that. He's determined. I mean, he, he's a go-getter. He, he's gonna, if he wants to do something, it's going to get done. Business like a more and then Ilona Lishuga and Iswega Bill. Got to a tactical low good tige, Ilupus and go to the little business like Yena Funu Tilagulon. He has plans to scale up the business and service more rural and peri urban areas with clean drinking water. He unpacks some of his proposed growth plans with Pepsi and challenges of servicing rural areas. So I'm here at the Making Moves studio, uh, just about to meet Pepsi to talk a little bit about my business. Uh, a little bit nervous, but uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. Kusini Water sets up mobile water purification containers in rural and peri-urban areas. The idea is to provide these communities with clean drinking water at a reasonable cost. I'm curious to find out if these communities actually spend money on bottled water, and more importantly, how it is that Murendeni is planning to scale up the business. Murendeni, welcome to Making Moves. Thank you, sir. How are you, my brother? Good, sir. How are you? Fantastic. Thanks. Take a seat. Thank you. All right, so let's start with the most important part of the business, and that's the money. Yes. I'm battling to see how this business is going to grow and how it's going to make money. Okay. I'm battling because you're selling bottled water into communities that can't necessarily afford bottled water. Yeah. When you look at your financials, the only revenue comes from corp corporate, mm -hmm. um, and that's not many, mm -hmm. and your innovation hub uh, funding. Mm -hmm. So where is this money going to come from? Sure. We don't necessarily see this as a bottled water business in a sense, because primarily our objective is to manufacture water treatment systems. You're selling water, one rand a litre, into a community that can afford one rand a litre, yeah. but they're not buying in great quantities. Why is that? So, I mean, it's, it's definitely have to do, it had definitely has to do with the word of mouth and marketing. We've only been operating for a very short time in, in the community that we're operating in. And word of mouth is rising every single day. We're seeing growth and growth and growth, compounded growth um, of, of 15 to 20% um, on a week-to-week on a -week basis. So, so the demand is them. Okay, yeah. and how are you choosing which communities mm. the mobile containers go into? Yeah, so, World Health Organization defines access in two things. So proximity to having tap water, and the secondly, proximity to having quality tap water. So we choose communities based on, um, do they have tap water that's reliable? And secondly, is that tap water that they're getting of good quality, so acceptable, a uh, sense two for one quality. So communities that we go in right now, they have to fit one of two or both of those criteria. The community that we're sitting in in Woodbank, it fits both those criteria. The day that we want to shoot, we hadn't had water for five weeks, five weeks straight, and then beat power. And then when the water is back, people don't drink it based on the quality issue. So that's how we choose our, our communities. And people do have an appetite to buy a well-branded product, an aspirational product, when they know it's good quality. Okay. An average household uses how many liters? In drinking or in totality? Um, th in drinking, I suppose, okay. and cooking, the water that yeah. they would need to be purified. Yeah, so, so, so generally, an, an average household would use anything from 80 to about 120 liters okay. in a day. Uh, 120 liters per day mm. in a community of how many people? So roughly... 30 or how many households? Yeah, so, so we're looking at roughly a community of 30 to 40,000 um, households. Uh, this is so I'm like, why are they not all buying from you currently? It's marketing. We, we, we're getting the word out there about our, our product. Okay. We've only been operating for... So a short a, period. Very short okay, period, yeah. that's fine. Let's talk about the next level of yes. the business, which is where you're now servicing municipalities. Yes. That's the tender space. It's the dealing with government space. Why will they come to you? And what's the process of getting in those doors? Yeah. We, number one, it's a, this is a new product. It's an innovative product. Nothing has been done in this scale before. Our product, we've developed it purely to run on solar, meaning that we are able to upfront slash our cost by 35%, mm. just on electricity. You know the biggest production, water production is electricity, mm. especially when it comes to things like desalination. 
which is where the future of water is going. Our products were able to slash the cost of production 35% upfront because of just our engineering design alone. So that's where our IP lies. In former settlements right now, they get water from either trucks or tanks. We're able to replace that cost altogether and bring the community safe drinking water using our technology that uses solar, meaning that it costs significantly less. Let me make an example with Joburg Water. Joburg Water buys the bulk water at um, 8 rands per kilolitre at the moment. We're able to produce our water at 3 rand 1 cents per kilolitre at the moment, um, based on, on, on the specifications of our plant and the solar power, meaning that we're able to sell it to them for around 6 rand 50 per kilolitre. Yeah. Okay. So it's a grand vision, it's beautiful, it's amazing. The technology sounds incredible. You are an incredibly smart guy. My concern is how do you go from where you are to where you need to get to without burning? You are hoping to sell enough liters of water to communities to generate enough funding to be able to facilitate what you want to do. And that for me does not make sense yet. Okay. You'd have to sell a lot of water mm. in order to be able to fund the pilot projects that you want to do with municipalities. So how, how, how is that link going to happen? Mm -hmm. We, uh, our business ob objective is on manufacturing. So we've got access to um, funding that comes from the manufacturing space within the IDC itself. And I fully, fully agree with you. Um, we'll need to move to the next level and it's going to need a lot of capital because the, the equipment that you're going to be purchasing for the municipality costs a lot of money because we, our business model relies on us generating revenue on usage from the municipality, which they charge on their users. But the infrastructure cost, that's where we're going to need the big bulk of so the money. So how are you going to fund that infrastructure cost? Yeah, so that's, we've, that's where the, 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 the IDC and the Innovation Hub are some of our partners that we do have at the moment come you, in. You need to have an offtake in place yes. and a customer and yes. an agreement in yes. place before they can fund. Yes. So how close are you to getting there? Very close. I mean, the pilot project is, is basically um, close to being signed off. Once the pilot is successful, um, then you move on to the next level, which is, which is great. Let me, let me try and understand this. Yes. When you say you're almost ready with the pilot project or the pilot project is near an end, is the pilot project the stores? No, so, okay, maybe, oh yeah. So, so the stores were our pilot project of the technology. Mm -hmm. So what we're moving towards now is the pilot project for the city itself. Who funds that? So that's where we're looking at, you know, the Innovation Hub um, and IDC. Man, I hope you change the world. I hope you change the way that uh, we get water. I truly believe in, in you. I'm, I'm inspired by you. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Murundeni's innovation is much needed, but like all new technology, it's going to take time to convince the powers that be to invest in his technology. And I think in the meantime, he's got his retail business and he needs to spend more energy growing that organically and maybe growing his corporate clients. I'm hoping that this coaching session will help him put steps in place and have a phased approach that will see him reach his full potential. Sure, my conversation with Pepsi, yo, it's really, really hectic. Um, some really great insights came out. Um, yeah, there's a lot of questions that I need to, to go and answer um, after that session. So. It was a great conversation, really robust, um, but I think, yeah, I think there's a lot to take away from it. You could reach 30,000, you're currently reaching 10. Yeah. It's not often that we are able to connect to a larger vision even before we can see the next step right here. So I know that your trajectory will be good, mm. but the reality is we have to survive here now, today. Sure. Yeah. Kusini water addresses critical needs in most rural communities that are in need of safe drinking water. In his coaching session, he will explore ways to get a buy-in from local government and private companies. And what are the issues coming out of that that you'd like us to deal with today? Just based on the numbers alone, it doesn't look like the business is doing much or is doing well. Mm. 
Um, so how do we how do we get it to that to that next level? So from what I'm hearing, you have different kinds of customers, right? You have your retail customers that <laughs> are the people who walk in and out of your shop yeah. on the daily, who buy water, yeah. right? And then you have ultimately a municipality. Yes. Right. And, and that, I don't really like goal. and I don't no? really like the, the, the retail business because <laughs> it's got too many moving parts, too many yeah, too too much that needs to be controlled yeah. in order to, to for it to just function. So so yeah, and, and, and the municipal one is it's it's a much slower business as Pepsi was mentioning. Government yeah. wheels do turn a little bit slower than yeah. you know, than many other wheels. So it's it's a it's a tough tough point to scale at for myself. Yeah. It is, it is. And I understand how because it's your business, you want to do what you like and what yes. you don't like, yeah, exactly, right? Exactly. Versus what's potentially good for the business and sustainable for the business versus what's not. Yeah. So Marandeni is actually really passionate about his craft. You can tell because he wants to have his hands on everything. But that compromises the quality of what he does and the rate at which he does it, which hampers the growth of the business in turn. But where's your staff? <laughs> yeah, the stuff is there. Um, what are they doing? So, so yeah, I mean the stuff. The stuff is there. In, you know, I've got people that work in the shop, mm -hmm. uh, interns that do a lot of the marketing work. Mm -hmm. um, so I suppose it's a case of managing managing the people better. Okay, so Morandini actually really, really, really needs to start delegating in order for him to get things done quicker. I mean, his whole reason for not going into retail is he doesn't like it. The reason he doesn't like it is because actually he's had to do it before and it caused him too much havoc, running around there, picking that up. And I think if he could have just delegated that to someone else, um, he would see his business growing in the retail side just by managing people versus actually doing everything himself. So I'm going <laughs> to ask if you're delegating enough because if you as a business owner are having to run around for bottles, to stick labels on bottles, yeah. um, as well as to operate the business and to try to grow the vision that you currently have to that company that's ultimately servicing those municipalities, how on earth are you supposed to cope with all of that? Oh, are yeah. you delegating enough? I fully agree with that. I think one of the things that I, I should be thinking about now is how am I going to make the business sustainable, just as a baseline, making the business sustainable. Retail gives us quick wins, it gives us easy wins, but what I need to do is to delegate better. Second thing, there's now 800 liters that you're currently selling. There's 1,500 that you're speaking of. Yes. And you're saying that each household uses 80 to 120 yeah. liters. So if I were to actually to use that parameter, you're technically selling to 10 households. In a sense, yeah. In a sense, mm. on a daily basis, mm. in a community where you could reach how many households? Close to 30,000 households. 30,000. Mm. You could reach 30,000, you're currently reaching 10. This is even before I start speaking about corporate clients who use water coolers and who have employees all day, eight hours a day, nine hours a day, drinking water from your stations. Yeah. So retail is critical. And at, at, at the moment, we're like, we're not using it as much as we can. I understand your greater vision and I admire it. Mm. It's not often that we are able to connect to a larger vision even before we can see the next step mm. right here. So I know that your trajectory will be good. Mm. But the reality is we have to survive here now, today. Sure. Yeah. And we have to exploit the retail space that we currently have, right? So I need you. I need you to go and look into that. I need you to go into letting go, delegate. Morandain is lucky because his vision is clear, right? So he has his long-term goal set out for him and marked out for him. But there's little steps that are going to lead him to that big vision. And retail is one of those things. So retail is the thing that's going to form that ebb and flow inside of the business in order to see him making enough profitability to have the capital to invest in his long-term business. I need to make my team to be more efficient, delegate better in order to make that happen. So if we were to run, say, 10 container stores, we're able to fund a big portion of the capital that we need to move to the next level of the business that we're trying to get to. Yeah. You have a very complex business model, right? It's not a buying and reselling kind of thing. It's not as simple as all that. So in as complex as it is, make sure that you keep it simple and that it's literally understandable to okay. a, a primary school child. If they are able to connect with where it is you're investing your money, 
why you're investing it there, the cost saving, the cost reduction that you see as a result, and what impact it's going to have on your business as a whole. If you can articulate that well, and just speaking about your business, just speaking about your journey, as charismatically as you do, that's what I want to see. A, a logical presentation of why it is you should have this investment put into your business. Good luck for tomorrow then. Sure, thank you. Morendeni, as an individual, I think highly skilled, highly technical, um, very passionate about his craft, and clearly he knows what he's doing, right? The business itself could do with a bit of work to make, start making it make money sense. Um, and I think it has potential, but I think because of Morendeni, the individual, um, it's suffering in a few aspects. Sure, my coaching session with Akela, it was really, really good. Um, I think we came off the conversation with Pepsi with a lot of questions, um, and the coaching session really had a lot of, um, you know, sort of insights into how we can, we can be thinking about some of the challenges that we have when it comes to scaling and when it comes to just the business focus on its own. I think she, 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 she really does understand, um, you know, the concept in small business in terms of the, the struggles that we do face. So it was really amazing uh, and just the thinking behind some of the things that we should be looking at uh, from a retail space, which is something that I was sort of trying to avoid, you know. At the moment, our biggest value proposition lies on three things. I'm worried. I saw off-grid. So what does off-grid mean if you still have electricity costs? Hi, I'm did you take anything out from your coaching session yesterday and from your one-on-one -on -one chat with yeah. Pepsi that you had? I mean, yeah, Chunguna Chungu Shinu Chawaka presentation, as you know, it's, yeah. it's based on yesterday's feedback. So yeah. every slide and everything that you're going to be seeing today, Zuka, uh, based on the coaching session. So I, I hope I hope I make I make justice to what my my coach has given me and um, and I hope I make justice to the business as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All the best in Thank you. Thank you. Morendeni, welcome to your pitch. Thank you. How are you feeling? Nervous. Nervous. That's an appropriate response to the situation. Yeah? <laughs> All right. So you've got four minutes to pitch your business. You're pitching to Akela, myself, and Martin. And that four minutes starts now. South Africa has been facing one of the biggest droughts we've ever seen in our lifetimes. There's going to be a company that will need to be an innovative company that needs to come up in order to save the country the same way that we found when the energy crisis hit us a few years ago. My name is Mrendeli Mafumo, and I'm the guy that's starting that company. After, starting to, after working for eight years for municipalities, both for City of Cape Town and Johannesburg Water, as a water scientist, I started Kusini Water. At Kusini Water, we make mobile, solar-powered, water purification units, um, and our business objective is on becoming the first local producer of nanomembrane technology for water purification systems, especially when it comes to off-grid uh, water purification. Um, we're, we're, uh, at the moment, our biggest value proposition lies on three things. 
The first biggest value proposition is that at the moment we're able to save 35% of production cost um, because we all know that the biggest cost in producing water is that of energy. So by using solar power and automation, we're able to save up to 35% of production cost. Our second um, value proposition, which is where our IP lies, is on the, on the, on the, on the filters. So we use macadamia nut shells. Um, these are macadamia nut shells that we take from a farmer in Limpopo. We incinerate these shells, which were, we, in the past were, were waste, and we use these shells as our activated carbon filter. And our third um, biggest value proposition is that we're able to produce 60 times more water than the current best practice of reverse osmosis. Our revenue strategy is, 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 is very simple. It's threefold. So the first part of our revenue strategy is that uh, our revenue model is pay-per-use, so usage fee. Um, at the moment, we've got two, two separate clients. So the first client is that of a retail scale. So we use our system in a water shop where we charge one run per liter for purification. And we also do bottling. We charge, uh, we pay, we, obviously, we charge for, uh, for water bottles. And our second um, revenue strategy is that of municipalities, so small to medium municipalities, as well as industrial producers of water, where we charge them um, for usage fee of about 650 cents per kilolitre. Um, so our biggest um, value proposition lies on the fact that our systems are mobile, so they are quick to, 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 to produce. Um, they are quick to, um, so they've got very little chemicals that we use as well. Um, and we've noticed two biggest gaps in the market, which is number one, seawater desalination, where the biggest, again, the biggest cost of producing seawater desalination um, is of energy, but with our technology, we're able to reduce that cost. Um, at the moment, our traction, we've already um, opened, we've already finished our first design of our system. We've opened two sites, we're averaging 800 liters, and we've got some few corporate clients where we dispense water to. And with the 50,000 rand investment, we're going to be going into our second design, which is our bigger unit. And, the, the, uh, and what, are we, what we're going to be doing with the money is number one, uh, we're gonna, we recently, our lease expires on the 15th of December. We've got a new lease for about 9.50 per month um, in, a, in a startup campus in Branston, where we'll be paying 9.50 uh, per month. Um, so we'll be using the 10,000 rands to pay for the rest of the year. We've, I've already paid for Jan. And the second part, we're gonna be using, um, second amount, which is for 1,000. We're gonna be using it for automation. Because of the solar power that you're gonna be getting on our new unit, our bigger unit, we're able to save, in our retail scale, we're able to save uh, from currently we're producing one liter for 18 cents, we're able to save that to come to about 13 liters. When it comes to our industrial scale or our municipal scale, we're able to also save our water. Um, so that's a mistake there, it's supposed to be two run 70 cents. We, um, our vision to scale is that at the moment um, we are at retail, so we've got two retail stores. We're going to be going next year into, uh, we're going to be running a pilot uh, in a small scale municipality where we're going to be going for about 500 to about 800 kiloliters at about 650 per kiloliter. And eventually our dream is to get to big water distribution within the African continent of close to 20, 20 million liters in a day per plant. Um, I look forward to your questions and I invite you to invest these 50,000 rands to get us to that next level of producing good water for medium spill. All right, thank you, sir. Your time is up. Thank you. Um, a few questions. Yes. Let's start with the numbers. Go back to where you want to use this money. Yes. Let's talk about this automation. I understand the software is a one-off cost, yes. I imagine. Yes. The sensors. It's per sensor. per sensor. So how many sensors is 41,000 going to yeah, buy so you? This will be able to assist us to get the two systems that we have and also the new system that we're going to be running next year. So uh, three. Yeah, three new systems. Three units. And the third unit is going to be another container for retail. Is that correct? Correct. Sorry. I'm worried. I saw off-grid. So what does off-grid mean if you still have electricity costs? Oh, so it means... So the biggest challenge at the moment is that the solar technology is not at yet that the scale that it is able to produce water at 100% efficiency. And the reason for that is because of the amount, the, the amount of energy that it produces, the, the wavelength that it produces from, from solar itself. And also because some days don't have the sun as other days. Um, so the reason why we wouldn't be able to 100% at the moment use solar is primarily because of that. The technology is just not there yet on an industrial scale. But just like with Moore's law, when it comes to chips, solar technology improves to, to, to twice, uh, two times over every single year. So maybe in year five, we'll be able to produce 100% of all our production from just solar alone. Okay, 
So we've spoken about the municipalities and a smaller scale of the municipalities, yes. but tell me more about retail. So what, what exactly is the plan in terms of where we are right now? How are we going to reach more people and more customers in that area? Yes, so we, we're going to make the team more efficient, so I'm going to delegate a lot more to, to, in order to ensure that we market a lot better, we talk to people a lot better, so we're going to have a, a, at least one sales field agent that goes door to door um, just to ensure that we educate the people on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on, on, on the technology and the water itself, just to increase our customer base. Okay, I thank you. To, I need to be able to see the numbers, but yeah. thanks. Yeah, I think, I think we, this, is the, the, this is the beauty of this type of things, that we're able to tap into your knowledge and your, your wealth of experience. You're such a charmer, get out mm. of here. All right. <laughs> I believe the, the judges did understand what we're going to be using the, the money for, in terms, especially when it comes to um, the equipment that we're going to be purchasing. Um, so yeah, I believe they, they did understand what we're going to be using the money for. Who's going to fund, and you weren't able to answer that question, who's funding that capex? Mm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So in terms of way forward, each of us is just going to tell you whether we want you to stay or not. No, I think, yeah, I think, I think it went okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy. I covered everything that I needed to cover, and I think, yeah, I think it went okay. We can just hope that, you know, I make it to the next round. Yeah, well, well. Okela, you love this guy, so I'll start with you. I do. Why do you love this guy? I love how he has marked out his long-term vision. So oftentimes it's actually so difficult for entrepreneurs to cascade their goals and to actually articulate what it means for now. And spending time with him, I found that he's done that. And so I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying him doing that. Um, needless to say though, I think his retail side of things needs a bit of work. Mm. What, what, what do you think about his prospects in retail mm. versus his prospects in corporate? Mm. So selling water to corporates, versus just rolling out as many of these containers as possible and selling water to communities that can't access mm -hmm. uh, safe drinking water. Mm -hmm. which, which, which do you think is a better proposition? I don't think there is one. I think it's the balance of the two. Why? So 10 years ago, <clears throat> if you would have told us that bottled water would be so big in shops, I'd be like, nah, never. Today, though, it's a different story. We actually buy water as like a regular thing. It's a big thing. I think it's a reality that in the foreseeable future, we're going to need to get water into households in more ways than our government is able to support. He's got three corporate clients now. Okay. They're buying water from him. Sharp. There's not much more he can do. He's probably he can't sell them more water. No. He can't. I'm saying volume, <clears throat> okay? but consistent volume. Yeah. So go to clients that, or that, that are already buying water, mm -hmm. sell to them, that is your cash cow. That is you know that every week you're gonna be dropping off X amount of water that can cover your overheads. Do you think that we'll see you coming back in the next phase? Uh, I, I mean, I hope so. I, one can only hope, one can say, you know, you think they'll come back or not. Um, I think there's a lot of criteria. I don't think it's just about doing well on the presentation mm. or your, that you, your business is good, but I think there's a lot of criteria as well as the impact of the money, or what impact that's going to have in the business. So I suppose I will have to to take in all the feedback that they give me. Mm -hmm. yeah. He sells the bottles for five rand. That brings in different margins to the rent a liter that he's busy pushing when he's refilling uh, the bottles. Mm -hmm. What balance does he want to strike between those? Correct. Who is his customer? So all those things, he must just go flesh them out. Mm. Just a little bit. Okay. Um, let's call him back in, or, you know, is there anything else? Mm -mm. No. What? No, nothing. Let's find out if you about to attend. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ah, I'm going to you. Welcome back. Oh, thank you. Thank you Scale so much. of one to ten, how do you do? Uh, I'd say seven. 
seven. Seven point yeah, five. Fairly fair. Um, it was a complex pitch with lots of detail to go through, and you had to rush through it. Um, but I think you did fairly well. Thank you. So we're each going to give you our feedback and give you a task that we think you should go out there and execute and tell you whether we think you should be coming back or not. Okay, Lam? So for me, it's going to be to spend time in your retail model. I can see versus how you articulate your long-term vision and your medium-term vision. I can tell that your short-term vision is not yet concrete. Also exploring the, the, the possibility of increasing your prices but still keeping the water affordable. Go and find strategic partners that can partner with you. We're sitting with a crisis at the moment, and there are people out there that are in crisis mode as well that need people like you on the ground to be able to, you know, educate, etc., um, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, so please go and go and have a look at that and form those strategic partnerships so that it assists you in your business um, to be able to take care of the day-to-day -day operations and maybe add one or two um, staff members into your team that that can uh, sincerely focus in in that sector. Okay. okay. So in terms of tasks, one, you need to do this modelling and put mm -hmm. together a really robust. A roadmap that looks at retail. Okay. I'd say a second task. I imagine an NGO that you partner with that you back and push to hit all these corporates and get each one to fund a container that takes care of your capex. Okay. Fund and brand a container. It's there, it's branded. You're still selling the water to the community, but your startup cost has been subsidized. Yeah. They do it through the NGO so that they're getting their CSI. points and everything, CSI. You provide a service to the NGO okay. in the form of the, the, the actual unit itself. Just a thought process. Sure. Ne? Yeah. Third thing, go find where else you can get money to facilitate these pilots. Because mm. your big cost with the pilot is going to be the setting up of the plant in order to prove to the municipality that they save water, that you can do what you say you can do. Who's going to fund? And you weren't able to answer that question. Who's funding that CapEx? Mm. I know you've spoken about the IDC, the whatnot, but where, you know, is it CSIR? Are there other places that you can tap into to get money beyond the innovation hub? Yeah, so look beyond, if not here, what are the international funders looking at? Because there's loads of them out there. Yeah. So go and do some research around that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. So, in terms of way forward, each of us is just going to tell you whether we want you to stay or not. I'd like to see you come back, um, and with a strong focus on the on the tasks that you were given. Yeah, come back, man. And I, I, I'd like to see more of your story. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Now said. Mm. Cool. Well done. Thank you very much, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, so the journey ahead, making moves. I, I think it's been it's been really amazing. All of the feedback that I got from yesterday, that's what I put into my presentation today. So, it's time looking from outside in. It's been great. Yeah. If you are an entrepreneur and would like to be featured on the show, contact us on Making Moves at sabc.co.za or visit our website.